Hi, I'm Todd Jones, host of the podcast Press Box Access. Here's a clip from my interview with Alexander Wolf. Alex tells us why he believes the outlaw Jerry Tarkanian was the last honest man in the coaching ranks of college basketball. You mentioned Jerry Tarkanian, and you had a story a few years ago, the great, the great UNLV coach who was always battling with the NCAA throughout his career. Um, you had a story that said co- he was college basketball's last honest man. What yeah. did you mean by that? I guess it picks up on something Billy Tubbs told me. Um, you know, if we're going to talk Tark, we're going to Billy Tubbs. His name isn't too far behind, but <laughs> the Oklahoma coach, right? The, yeah, the old Oklahoma coach who knew that if he's going to be the basketball coach in Norman, he had to be entertaining because football was always going to be king. And Billy once told me he said, "I just think even just each of us should be given a budget, just be given a pot of money, and it's up to us, you know, like a corporate executive." To figure, let's just have honor among thieves. That was a phrase he used. <laughs> honor among thieves. And everybody gets the same amount and just see what you can do with it. You know, like you're playing Monopoly or something. <laughs> and and I, I, I love that. I mean, so, okay, if, if Tark and Billy Tubbs were both coaching at the same time, they would have been the two last honest men. Um, but he was so disarmingly candid about um, he really didn't care how they did in class. These were kids that he believed had prospects only if they could develop their basketball talent to go to the pros, um, which I don't think is necessarily true, but that's, it was the last chance saloon for a lot of guys. That was the type of player that Tark was looking for. And he, you know, there was no pomposity to him. You know, he wasn't grooming his hair like Lute Olsen or any of that. Mm -hmm. And um, it was refreshing. And I think the more you, the more you knew about the rest of, of college basketball, um, and I heard echoes of this in your interview with Dan Wetzel, um, and I, I completely agree with Dan that, you know, for some people to kind of pull on this artificial mask of, of virtue um, in a sport that certainly at that time was so uniformly corrupted uh, just does a disservice. Let's, let's, be, let's be honest, and Tark always was pretty open about, you know, this is the business we've chosen. Right, right, like Hyman Roth. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> what kind of interactions did you have with Tark? Do you re- anything uh, that you remember that you know paints a picture of who he was when you were dealing with him as a reporter? Yeah, he was always trying to win your favor. You know, it, it was very Las Vegas. Um, I remember his parting words to me when I was leaving his office after one interview for a story was, "Oh yeah, look me up next time in your." you're in town, I'll, I'll get some hookers for you. Oh, and, really? you know, that, that's, that's Las Vegas hospitality. And, you know, it, it, it's, you know, let the record reflect that on that time and no su- subsequent time did he do that for me. But that's the way he trafficked in favors. You know, that's sort of how that city works. And he was a perfect fit for it. He knew how to put on a show. They were going to run. Um, he was going to do all the worrying about how good the team was and chew on the towel and, um, you know, and I think he, he genuinely cared about his players, but I think he saw them as one dimensional, uh, people. He didn't, he didn't see the, you know, that Greg Anthony became, uh, successful as a broadcaster, for instance, isn't something that Tark would have encouraged him to do or, or try to engineer for him. That Greg right. did it on his own is to Greg's credit. Um, but I think Tark just saw these guys as kind of, you know, he was Father Flanagan and they were the the kids that ended up in his (laughs) home for wayward boys.